So um, thank you, David and Carl, for inviting us to speak today. Uh, in this session with my colleagues, uh, Robert and Michele, we address the question, is there oil onshore northern Namibia? We really think so. Monitors were set up by geodynamics, specialists in unconventional techniques, which have great benefits for onshore exploration, reducing risk, time, and cost. So if you move to the next slide, Robin. The reason David may have asked us could be due to these headlines concerning the Kavango onshore basin in the north of Namibia. In January, the scoop was that our near neighbor, Reconnaissance Energy Africa, listed on the TSX venture market, had exclusive rights over the Kavango Basin. They described it as a Permian play, unique to their license area, similar in scale to Midland in the US, and could generate, as you see in the second January slot, 100 billion barrels. In April, Recon announced partial results of its first stratigraphic well, declaring evidence of a petroleum system. At the end of June, the bottom right-hand block, the story had changed to a different play and analog. Older source rocks in sub-basins, similar to those that have been produced prolifically in Iran, Saudi, and Oman. The result has been a dramatic rise in their share price since January, cooling a bit lately, but still 15 times for a market value today of around 1.2 billion US dollars. Move to the next slide. Our license area is 150 kilometers to the west of Recon Blocks, in the center of the Awambo Basin, an area of 17,000 square kilometers. Robin will show you how we've used unconventional techniques to high-grade areas and integrated them with existing data and 2D. Michele will explain more about remote sensing and passive seismic. We believe that Recon's new story is consistent with our understanding of our area. Namibia offers favorable conditions and we have strong local support. While we can already demonstrate significant prospective resources, there is work to be done and wells to drill. We're looking for a partner uh, to bring, to go forward together. And now I'd like to hand over to Robin to explain more about the geology and geophysics we've done. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so the Iwambo Basin is in northern Namibia <clears throat> and represents an underexplored neoproterozoic to Paleozoic basin. So we're dealing with something a little bit older than, than we generally deal with in the oil and gas business, but we'll explain why that is attractive to us. Uh, partly because historically, historical and newly acquired data suggest that the basin has significant hydrocarbon potential. Uh, talking about how we could monetize such a thing, um, oil can get out of here very easily as there's a rail link from Sumed, which is just to the south of the monitor blocks here, uh, down to Volpus Bay. And the Oambo Basin is also ideally positioned for gas to power. As Neil was talking about, the Southern African region needs to replace a lot of coal generated gas, coal, ge coal generated electricity with something else. And gas here, uh, turning into power can collect, connect to the Namibian grid within 200 kilometers from here and would displace electricity imported from South Africa and generated from coal. So, uh, so it has another advantage. So here's the monitor blocks. This is the Awambo Basin on the gravity data. And interestingly, this is where Recon are busy drilling over in this area. Now you'll see later that this is a, a manifestation of a thrust front at the edge of the basin. Uh, and that's where we think they're drilling into. But I think they're drilling the east flank of the Oambo Basin. Ah. So just focusing in on that thrust front at the left-hand end of the section here, which is down in the south to the south, in the south of the blocks here, we're not looking at this as our prospective area, but certainly in the pre-thrusts, we see uh, some closures uh, being having some potential. Now, this is blank because there isn't actually a seismic line here. Uh, what you see here is the majority of the seismic in the basin. We're aware that there are some lines in the block next door to us, and Recon are currently embarking on a, a survey in their blocks, which is over here, basically. So we see potential in these in these sort of structures in some rollovers in the uh, in the Portland Basin here, um, and then 
there may be some more interest up in this area, uh, but we just don't have the, the seismic to, to see if there are structures manifested in that area. There are certainly some basin structures that could be underpinning something. The areas of interest identified thus far on the seismic and on the, uh, the remote sensing and other non-seismic non techniques, which have been used extensively, <clears throat> are shown here. And we'll see a little bit more on those later. Sorry, the mouse doesn't work. And so there was a lot of talk about Permian. And there is Permian potential in South Africa, in the Karoo Basin. In this particular area, in the Awamba, we don't see that well developed. Uh, it's, a, it's a relatively thin section, up to about 600 meters across the basin. No huge source rock development, but there are some shales that could, and, and sands that could form reservoir seal pairs up in this section. Where we see it getting very interesting is in the Awambo shale here. Now these are, these are pre-Cambrian rocks. Okay, there's the start of the Cambrian there. Uh, where we see up to 2.8% TOC in some of the Atosha wells to the west of us. Recent studies do date this as, as potentially Ordovician Silurian. So it could be an analog for the Silurian hot shale, which has sourced so many billions of barrels in, in North Africa and the Middle East. But even if it isn't, it's still a valid source rock uh, with some reservoir and seal pairs above it. So it has potential. We find it much more interesting when we get down here into the Neoproterozoic. We see good evidence for carbonate source rocks in the lower Sumed and upper Abanab formations, with TOCs up to 2.3% measured in a core from a Kusip Springs well, well to the south. Now, you may wonder, well, that this is such an old system. How could it be of interest from a hydrocarbon perspective? I would point you to Oman, where in the South and Gaba salt basins, more than 3 billion barrels of oil reserves have been discovered. And Eastern Siberia and the Sichuan Basin in China, where very extensive oil and gas fields have been discovered, almost 10 billion barrels of oil equivalent between those two. So there's a very large prize here, perhaps not the 100 billion barrels that, that Recon were talking about, or, or Mr. Jury, but significant potential. Um, you notice, you may have noticed in that last description of the quote from June, they talk about stacked source and reservoir sections. And we think this is exactly representative of this section. We think this is what they've been drilling through and seeing such encouragement with their oil and gas shows there. So moving on to how that looks in, a, in section form. So here in the west, uh, we have the wells that have been drilled, Atosha 5-1A and Atosha 2-1. You come northwards and then eastwards, and this is where the monitor acreage is over on this eastern end of the section. I put a little postulated source maturity uh, thermometer here, if you like. So, in the west, the, the Wambo Shale is, is relatively shallow. Uh, it's been thrust up. And uh, you may notice that the well penetrations are not really testing this section at all. Now, this doesn't include the recon wells. We don't have those results. And they've been quite wary, I think, on, on announcing depths and, and, and formation ages in their releases so far. We look forward to more information on that. So we have limited information on this deeper section, but it does occur in outcrop and there are other places where we can get at it. And where we get, can get at it, we see that we see good, good porosities in the carbonates, and particularly in fractured carbonates. We see stromatolites and we see algal buildups, all of which could be very commercial reservoirs out here. As for the source rocks, they're, they're not depicted on here particularly, but they would be post-glacial, with Chios being a, a glacial tillite and a glacial, another one down here. Um, the source rocks within these formations, we believe in the oil or early gas window. The well results that we do have show a fairly cool basin. So even at these depths of 5,000 meters, we could be well below 120 degrees at this point. And of course, as we go south from here, these formations shallow somewhat within our block. So why do we think we, we're gonna find oil and gas here? Uh, there were oil shows in a water sample and extracts from well Atosha 5-1A. The well was dormant for a year while they waited for a bigger rig to drill deeper. And when they went back into the wellbore, they found a barrel of oil in, in the wellbore. 
And that geochemically appears to be a biodegraded oil from a carbonate source rock. Now, those carbonate source rocks are what you see in the, in the Sumeb and, and Abinab formations. There are also oil extracts from the Atosha 1 well. This is a mining area. Sumeb is, is a big mine, uh, combat another, and they see various indications of hydrocarbons through, through that mining area. There was an oil seat reported in 1967 in the Upper Huab River. We have not been back to sample that, but uh, it's something, certainly something we can do. More recently, soil gas sampling conducted in 2013 shows the presence of migrating hydrocarbons. And the passive seismic results, which Monitor have undertaken, these passive seismic surveys can directly detect hydrocarbons in the subsurface because of the impact of those hydrocarbons on the amplitude spectrum. And, and Michele will talk some more about that. And of course, as Andrew has mentioned, we have these recent Recon Africa well results announcing significant oil and gas shows in neighboring sub basins, hundreds of meters of, of oil and gas shows. A brief summary of, of what's been used to get us to this point of identifying areas of interest within the monitor acreage. There are legacy gravity and magnetic surveys, which have been very helpful in, in looking at the structural grain, where we might expect those anticlines in the, in the fallen basin and the thrust structures to be. Um, we've also used radiometric data. There's some very neat techniques, which uh, I, I've learned recently, I will confess, around what, what happens to uranium uh, as, as it uh, percolates through the surface as it's water soluble. Um, soil gas sampling, as I mentioned, there is some 2D seismic data, 473 kilometers of it. We're gonna talk about perhaps doing some more of that. Uh, some more remote sensing techniques, which Michele will again get into, and that passive spice, seismic spectroscopy, which I'm used to simply using si passive seismic, very low frequency three component geophones to generate velocity profiles in depth for the subsurface as a way of calibrating seismic data and, and well bores. But actually there is, appears to be a huge amount more you can get from, from passive seismic data, which uh, Michele will discuss later. So those th we've come up with these three areas of interest, uh, which are quite extensive, almost 400 square kilometers each. And those have been surveyed with passive seismic uh, to see which uh, we believe to try and rank them, choose which is the most prospective. And at the moment, we're seeing our area two, which is in the west of the acreage, as the most, ex the most prospective. It has the most data. It has some seismic data on it. Um, and these, one of the seismic lines shows structure at three levels and a significant coincidence of the passic seismic anomalies and gas anomalies from the soil sampling. So things are coming together here. And our one lead has a mean resource of 373 million barrels of oil or 733 BCF of gas, not insignificant. And either of those with the terms we have here and with the export routes we have here, clearly commercial. So what's next? Um, and some more data is always good. Uh, I'm always a believer in that, but there is a point at which you have to decide, well, we're gonna test this. Uh, we can do some further passive seismic acquisition to directly detect those hydrocarbons at the subsurface. We can acquire some more 2D seismic data to further delineate anticlinal structures. And there is a, a crew working for Recon. Recon, it's a Polaris crew, Canadian contractor. They have an interesting low impact crew. It's an accelerated weight drop. So that's perfect for our environment. Uh, I should have pointed out on the Namibian map, we are right next to the Atosha National Park, which is a, an area of incredible scenic beauty to be preserved and not to be messed with. Our, our block actually has a little cutout uh, around the park. So we're not at all in the park. We're not in the protected area around it, but we do want to be careful of the environment. Um, and then of course, testing our first prospect. We want to drill an exploration well to test the full section from that black shale to the base of the Atabi, if that's still within closure. There's potential to use Recon Africa's rig in the medium term. We understand it's not going to be busy 100% of the time. And that rig is clearly capable of drilling to the depths required by Monitor. So, uh, so we have some access to, to um, oil field equipment next door, which is a little bit of an unusual situation in this part of Namibia. Uh, and we want to make use of that. So I'm going to hand over to Michele now uh, to go through the, the benefits of the remote sensing and passive seismic.